Hey, 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 everyone, and welcome to Breaked In. Today, we're going to be talking about the newly released Spider-Man No Way Home, because if I don't talk about it, I'm going to explode, blow up, whatever. This movie was insane, and so, if you haven't seen the movie already, click off this video. This is going to be a spoiler-filled video. I'm going to talk about everything that happened and why it was such a good movie. So, without further ado, let's get right into this. Spoiler alert. If you don't want to be spoiled, this is the time to click off. Because right now, I am about to begin the video. So, Spider-Man No Way Home picks off after the events of... Far from home, when Spider-Man's identity is revealed as Peter Parker and now the entire world knows. But then they don't like they don't like that he's a murderer, so they try chasing after him and so Spider-Man and MJ you know get out of there. And they land on this bridge and then they successfully make it back to his apartment. And after that, they, you know, Peter go to st goes to school. And it's a disaster. Because everyone knows Peter now is Spider-Man. And so since, you know, his friends, MJ and Ned, are trying to go to school, like college... But they keep getting declined because they're friends with Spider-Man. So, the best, one of the best parts of the movie pops up. Matt Murdock, my man, Matt Murdock shows up. And he's the lawyer in this movie. And basically, he's talking about how you could, like, we could fix this situation up. So, they get this apartment happy happy's apartment i believe and oh my god when i saw matt murdoch and someone threw a brick through the window and he caught it bro that was so good i was like dang my man's got skills because you know he matt murdoch is also known as daredevil not ever no one knows that because you know it's a secret identity but in the show daredevil <laughs> matt murdoch is daredevil so, Peter realizes he's made a mistake, and he needs everything to go back the way it was. So, he goes to Doctor Strange for help in changing everything, putting it back in order. Um, but then Peter ruins the spell by saying, no, Aunt May needs to know, MJ needs to know, Ned needs to know, and then the spell gets ruined. And so, the spell's ruined, but, you know, Doctor Strange successfully, you know, like, contains the spell in a little box thing. Not not the other box, though. It's like a weird crystal box. I don't know. But, he's contained the spell, but apparently, some people have made it through. As you can see in the bridge scene, um, Peter, Peter literally is trying to get to college and he's talking to the lady which is kind of i don't know why would you i mean i know everyone knows he's fireman but it's still kind of weird going to the highway to try to talk to your you know college person i don't know it's kind of weird but then we get one of the best scenes ever doc ock shows up they have a battle together on the bridge um Oh my god, this scene, bro, this scene was so good. And so, you know, they're fighting and all. And also, Green Goblin shows up in the battle. But, successfully, Doctor Strange successfully brings Spider-Man and Doc on, and Green Goblin. No, wait, did he bring Green Goblin? I'm not sure, whatever. They bring him back to the prison, and... Uh, everyone, he has a couple of villains in, in there, and Doctor Strange realizes there are others in this universe that need to be brought back uncontained, and and then brought back. 
so Peter has to go on a mission to like get everyone back and he does he does bring everyone back and Aunt May suggests the great idea of curing everyone you know fixing them but Spider-Man decides you know what that's a good idea However, Doctor Strange is like, if they die, they have to die. They go back to their universes and do what fate was meant to do, or whatever. Spider-Man's not having it, though, so he just nopes out of there with the box, and Doctor Strange and Spider-Man go on this epic battle. It was so epic. Like, it was so random, because they went through the mirror dimension, and everything was warping and stuff. It was so good like it wasn't like a normal fight scene where it punch punch tick tick it was literally a like a chase scene but throughout like weird warped realities and stuff it was so cool because there was like floating rocks and stuff and dang it i got a notification from homer simpson what's good homer Shout out to Homer Simpson, everyone. <laughs> so, yeah, the mirror, the mirror dimension was so good. And personally, I I think that was one of the best fight scenes. But, yeah, Spider-Man, uh, Spider-Man traps Doctor Strange in the mirror dimension and just ditches him there. But Spider-Man goes back to his apartment and... Uh, you know, he's fixing everyone. He's fixing... He fixed Doc Ock, and he's fixing Electro and Green Goblin. Uh, Electro has the thing on his chest. I don't know what it's called. I mean, I have no idea what it is, so... But it's taking all the electricity out of him, so he can become normal again. But he's also trying to make anti-serum for Green Goblin, whatever the... I don't know. I'm, a, I'm assuming it's anti-serum. <sighs> This is when the movie takes a turn for the worst. Oh my god. I got chills in the apartment scene where Spider-Man's Spidey sense or spider sense is going off the racks. It was insane. I mean, you could feel how terrifying it is. It's like a real life version of Among Us, but way better. Because like, you don't know who is the real bad guy. And and then Spider-Man gets to the end, and he's like, it's Green Goblin. And then he just flips his web onto uh, Green Goblin's hand to the window. And Green Goblin just starts smiling and says, you figured it out, Spider-Man. And oh my god, bro. He is terrifying. Green Goblin actually is better then way better than all the other villains. I thought it was going to be Doc Ock. Because, like, man, Doc Ock is epic and all. But Green Goblin is the true villain of this story. And it is amazing. I mean, it, it was terrifying just seeing him get punched in the face over and over and over. And he just starts laughing about it. Man, that is not Norman Osborn anymore. That is a demon in that and that man, that is Green Goblin. So, wow, that movie took a word, took the turn for the worst. And it was so fast. Like, it was so unexpected and fast. And you don't know what's happening until it's already over. It was, it was insane. I mean, I'm getting chills talking about it right now. And I'm going through that scene in my head. And so Green Goblin just, you know, convinces most of the villains. Uh, Doc Ock is the only nice one in the movie, which is shocking, honestly. I thought they were all going to team up like Sinister Six style, but no, Doc Ock is not having it today. He's like, bro, I don't want to fight nobody. <laughs> so Green Goblin convinces the others to not be fixed. Like Electro rips out his thing. And gets the Stark reactor. And now he's got more power. Which is not good for Spider-Man. So Electro beams. Elect uh, 
Doc Ock out of the apartment, and Green Goblin chases, like, while they fight each other, Spider-Man and Green Goblin. It was insane, and then Spider-Man's punching Green Goblin, and he's laughing about it, and then he just, Green Goblin literally, like, just, like, wrestling, wrestle style, you know how when that dude jumps on the other person and just, like, elbows him or something, like, into the ground, like, literally shoves him into the ground, like, I don't know how to explain it, but Green Goblin does that to Spider-Man, and bump, like, I don't know what the word is, like, just throws him down all the way to the very first floor, he just does it multiple floors, repeat, he's like, he's insane, bro, and then, so, after that happens, Aunt May got a little bit of anti-serum, serum, whatever it's called, and she's on the first floor now, because she walked down the stairs, because uh, she could not, she could not deal with Green Goblin throwing you down. <laughs> um, so, yeah, Aunt May is chilling at the front, and this is kind of where the movie, like, gets even worse. Like, that scene was already crazy, but then... Green Goblin kills Aunt May. <laughs> and, oh my god, this was the most depressing scene in any Spider-Man movie ever, like, at all. I mean, ever, yeah. I, I, I'm not the type of person to cry or uh, have emotions. Like, yeah, my, you know, you get your throat little, like, your throat gets that weird bump. And you're like, oh, wow, this is really sad. But I actually never cried before. Like, actually, physically, tears going down my face. I mean, Aunt May dying is like, oh, nah. I actually cried during that scene in the movie theater. And everyone was so quiet. It was like... You know, like, when you're ruffling around in your chair trying to eat some popcorn? Nah, there was none of that. There was none of that in the theater. It was dead silent. Everyone was probably bawling their eyes off, bro. It was, God, it was so depressing when Peter's like, Oh, man, don't do this. Don't do this to me. And, like, oh, God. So, yeah. Aunt May, dead. Gone. Donner, Donner, whatever. And so, this is where the movie really gets dark. I never thought I could have such a, like, you know, movie, like, Spider-Man, jokey, jokey, giggly stuff. Nah, man, there's not a, none of that in the second half of this movie. This movie's like, we're not having any more jokes. We're, I mean, we there are some little jokes, but it's not with Tom Holland, because he's, he's depressed, bro, so, Spider-Man's mad, he, you know, mad, he's hiding out now, and so, Ned and MJ, they're like, we need to bring Spider-Man, we need to get Peter back, so, I don't know, I forgot how Ned got this weird magic ring, I think it was from I mean, it was definitely do from Doctor Strange. I just don't know how he got it, but I'm not going to ask. I forgot. It was, it's been... I watched this movie two days ago, I think, and I still think about it. <sighs> this is the best scene in the entire... Actually, no, there's a scene later on in the movie. But this is one of the best scenes in the entire movie. And I'm going to say it in any movie. Ned says, bring back Peter. The portal starts opening. It shuts. And then Ned's like, all right, we're going to try that again. So he does it again. It opens. And then they see Spider-Man. They see Spider-Man. They're like, come over here, Spider-Man. We got we to gotta get over here, Peter. They, he, you know, the Spider-Man, Peter gets over there. They meet up with MJ and Ned. Nah, man, it's not the Peter they know. It's not Tom Holland. It's actually Andrew Garfield, oh, let's go, and then they're like, bro, who are you, and he's like, I'm, I'm Peter Parker, 
He was so epic. When that scene popped up, bro, even Andrew Garfield got more, like, I don't know. When that, when that scene, scene, you know, happened, bro, everyone in the theater, I've never had a theater like this invested into the movie. And they literally cheered and clapped. Honestly, I didn't even think it was the theater at first. I thought it was the movie just doing some music or something. No, nah, man, it was my theater going wild. I hear people behind me clapping your brains out. Oh, my God. That, that scene. So, yeah. Andrew Garfield. Andrew Garfield shows up in the MCU because he knows he's Peter Parker because he is Peter Parker. That's how Doctor Strange accidentally brought him over. So... If the spell had kept going, that means we could have gotten more Peters. Oh, wait. We did. We did get someone else. Tom. Oh, wait. No, that's... Dang it. I messed up. Hobie. Hobie McGuire. Honestly? I, I, even I, I, even I started cheering, bro. <laughs> I saw Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield in the same room together. I started screaming. I mean, not that loud because I don't want to disrupt the movie ex experience. But, my God, it was insane. Tobey Maguire back from his original roles. He is the man who made movies what they are now. I was superhero movies. He made Spider-Man what Spider-Man is. This man single-handedly brought the MCU, because ever since MCU saw, oh, wow, those Spider-Man movies did pretty good, we should do an Iron Man one or something, man, that man single-handedly made them Spider-Man movies amazing, the original ones, and even Andrew Garfield's movies are actually really good, like, people always hate on them, and I'm like, dude, it's, it's actually pretty good, like, yeah, the second movie was a bit, you know, man, yeah, but Gwen Stacy's death, like, Dang. And the fact that Andrew Garfield has a redemption arc in this movie that we'll, we'll talk about later. But, my God, Andrew and Toby will be in the same room. They're they shoot webs at each other. And then Ned's mom or something is like, can you please clean up this mess in Spanish? It was so funny, bro. And, and then they actually start cleaning up the mess. It was, it was like, it was amazing. I, I actually... I don't know how to explain it in words. Like, you had to be there. And I was the type of person who was trying not to keep my hopes up. Like, I was expect, I wasn't... Like, I wanted them to be in the movie, but I didn't expect it. I didn't assume it. I was like... I mean, they might not be in it, because, like, we already have supervillains. That's a lot of OG actors they have to bring back. So, you know, but... I was hoping for it, and then when I saw this, I mean, I saw weeks, some weeks, and there were definitely rumors, and people were expecting it to be in a movie, even though the movie was already done by the time they expected this stuff to be out, so, what's to say, I'm glad, I am very glad they brought back Andrew and Toby, because then... People would have hated this movie for no reason. Like, the movie would have been perfectly fine without them. But then, they show up and, oh, God, it's even better. It's even better than perfect. It's above perfect. That's That's got to be impossible, right? And it's just amazing. So, I, that, that was the best part. That was one of the best parts. So, then... The three, they, they find out where's Peter, the Tom Holland. I'm going to have to say their actor names. I'm not even going to say Peter or Spider-Man. They, the, the other people, damn it. The other Spider-Man find Tom Holland. And so they're like, there's, you know, they explain what's happening and stuff. There's this, there's two jokes in this movie. That's really funny. Um, There's a scene of them talking about their web shooters, like, you know, like, he's like, I gotta get web fluid for my web shooter. And he's like, 
what? Do you have web shooters? And, he, and, and Tom's like, you, what do you mean? You don't have web shooters? And then Toby just shoots at, like, something. And and everyone, would, like, the the other Spider-Man just groan. Like, they make such a weird noise. Bro. They're like, bro, what is that? <laughs> it was such a funny scene. They talk about it in the Statue of Liberty also, like... I don't know what exactly they talked about. But also, there was a scene where Ned says, Spider-Man, or Peter, whatever. And then they're, they're all like, yeah. And then Ted Ned's like, no, I mean that Peter. And then you, the other ones are like, the other Spider-Man are like, this Peter? They're pointing at each other. They're like, me or that guy? Or like, it was so... I'm explaining the joke horribly because I... I'm still thinking about it. I'm explaining the choke horribly, but the, it was so funny because like they did the pointy meme in the movie. They also did um my back hurts like the Toby's my back hurts. <laughs> so you know you, that happened in the movie. It was very very funny those scenes, but still it did not affect the dark tone of the movie. Like the movie. Straight up just dark now. I mean, they had little jokes. But it didn't ruin the, the feeling of the movie. Like, Tom is still mad at Green Goblin. So, they meet up at the Statue of Liberty. The villains are there. Or at least the three of them are there. The Wizard, Sandman, and Electro. And... So, they're all ready. And then the battle starts. They all do this pose. They literally land all like this. So people were actually right about this scene. Like, they actually somehow guessed really similar to what happened. Toby lands on the left, Tom in the middle, and then Andrew on the right. I mean, they didn't do the same pose that Tom did. They did their own poses. So it's unique. And then, you know, they all charge. I mean, you can't see any of the characters in this picture because it's so low quality it's from the movie theater so <laughs> hopefully sony doesn't take this video down i just realized i mean it says spoiler we're in the video so people should be expecting this stuff i mean if yeah whatever they all charge andrew garfield charges at jamie fox no not jamie fox uh the wizard and Tom, Tom, Tom goes for the Sandman. Toby goes for a Electro. Um, it was so epic. Like, Andrew actually ticked the wizard in the face. So, yeah. They fight. You know, they fix all these bad guys. Like, Sandman turns back into his human self. Uh, the wizard turns back into his human self. And the Electro uh, turns back into his human self. You know, everyone just wants to be human today. So, yeah, also Doc Ock shows up and, like, tricks Electro that he's gonna take care of the other Spider-Man. And then he literally just, like, drops this Spider-Man and he's like, oh, I bet I'll take care of this Electro dude for you. He literally just beats up Electro or something. So, you know, pretty good twist. I honestly thought Doc Ock is turning evil because, like, Green Goblin's like, trust me, you want to kill these guys. So, I was like, dang, we gotta fight five of them now. No, nah, it was a twist. It was a very good one. Honestly, I'm not even mad that they did that. It was it was actually pretty good. But, all the villains are back to their human selves. But the only one who is mad enough to not turn back. He is so, so, like, into this demon thing that's going on like he's got mental issues like literally got mental issues green goblin green, the only one left to fight is green goblin and when tom sees green goblin he literally like okay so mj like falls off the metal metal structure and She's falling. She is falling. And I know I have a picture of this somewhere, so I've already ruined the video. Just pretend we have the picture, okay? Uh, where's the picture? Dang it. Right here. Okay. 
Let's just pretend this did not ruin the video. I mean, it's still... It's already a messy video. So, does it really affect anything to know? MJ is falling to her death, possibly. And Tom is like... He just drops everything he's doing and jumps straight to catch her. And he's so close, but no. Green Goblin's glider just smacks him out of the way. And then Andrew's like... I can't let this happen to Tom. I already lost someone like Gwen. So Andrew literally d stops everything he's doing. Just jumps straight to her MJ. And with all his power and strength, he literally does not want MJ to die. And I think that is such a good redemption arc for him. He lost Gwen Stacy and he's not going to lose someone lose their love of their life. The love of their life. Andrew charges straight at MJ and just saves her. Literally saves her. And I, everyone, everyone knew what this meant for Andrew. And they all cheered. They all cheered because they all knew what this meant. They knew. They knew that Andrew lost someone important to him and he's not going to let that happen to some other Spider-Man. So, honestly, that was heartbreaking and bittersweet and just awesome. Awesome scene. Redemption arc, 10 out of 10. Andrew saves her and he's like, he looks so scared. He's like, are you okay? And she's like, yeah, are you okay? And he's like, yeah. he smiles and he's like, yeah. I, I don't know why I'm explaining this. You probably already saw the movie. But I just, I need to talk about it. I need to talk about it. So, that happened. And I was, I was, so, I was cheering. Because I was like, Andrew finally got his redemption arc. Yeah, he didn't get his third movie. But he got this. And that's enough for me. So, since that happens, Tom is mad. Even more. Because Green Goblin's like, I'm not gonna let you save her. So now he really is mad. He already lost Aunt May. He was about to lose MJ. He's like, I'm going to kill you. He doesn't even want to fix Green Goblin. He just wants to kill him. He knows it's fate for Green Goblin to die in his universe. But he wants to kill him in his universe. Excuse me. I burped. That. Let's just forget about that. But the fact that he just wants to kill Green Goblin shows how much he cared about MJ and Aunt May is so heartbreaking. Like, he is punching Green Goblin as he laughs. As he smiles, he says, do more, punch me more. And Spider-Man just wants to kill him in the worst way possible. He picks up his Green Goblin's glider. He picks up his glider and just charges it straight at Green Goblin's face. Bro, is it ironic that you're in a whole other universe and you're about to die the same way you died in the original universe? Yeah, pretty dang sad. Well, not really, because it's Green Goblin. He deserves it. He really, truly deserves it. I mean... In the original universe, he was like, he was like, he kind of, he regretted it. He had human left in him. In here, in here, he, he has lost all signs of humanity in him. He is just the Green Goblin. There's no more Norman inside of him. It's just the Green Goblin. And he does not care what happens to him. He just wants to torture these people. So... Honestly, kind of deserves it. And I kind of was hoping to, um, you know, shove that thing in his face. But you know what? Toby did the right thing. He jumps in and stops Tom from killing T Green Goblin. He's like, don't do this, Peter. You're not going to want this. You're going to regret it when you're after, you know, like after you do this. So, you know... Toby's telling Spider Tom Holland to not do this. And it's it's so sweet because like Toby killed the his Green Goblin. 
and he still regrets it. So, um, just the fact that he's like, I'm not going to let you do this. And Tom's like, fine, I won't do it. And then he puts down the glider. And Green Goblin still has the audacity, the uh, biggest audacity in the entire universe. Actually, I should say multiverse now. To just stab Toby in the back. He literally backstabs him after Toby's like, bro, I saved you. Why you gotta do this to me? So, yep, the Green Goblin is not a human. But guess what? It doesn't matter because I'm pretty sure Green Goblin just ends up going back to his universe. Toby goes back and you know what? It doesn't matter. Green Goblin is still going to be the most insane person. But now someone else has to deal with it. Most likely Toby. So, sorry about that. But, yep. That scene. Whoa. I I do not know why I felt so angry. And, like, hoped that Tom, you know, killed Green Goblin. Because there is no humanity left in him. If, you know, but... Honestly, I also know that, like, Tom would have regretted it if he did, so. Props to Toby. Even though I would have done the the same thing as Tom. (laughs) But guess what? This spell, Spider-Man's like, we need to bring these people back to the universes. Because now the multiverse is really colliding. Also, Doctor Strange came back. Don't ask me how, I have no idea. But, um, Spider-Man makes the sacrifice of losing all his friends' memories of who Spider-Man is, of his, of their best friend, Peter. He makes the, the most depressing, but the best sacrifice. And Doctor Strange completes the spell. They all go their ways back to their universes where they are. Well, where they might actually survive. Because Dog Ock is normal now. Electro is normal. You know, the Wizard is normal. Sandman is normal. Green Goblin is just insane. He's just here to kill you guys. And, you know, the Spider-Man go back to the universes. And Spider-Man is all alone. And that is honestly the best way to end the trilogy. Because people have been saying this, and I am pretty sure 110%, 3,000% that it is the truest thing ever. This, this isn't Spider-Man. This isn't Tom Holland's story. This isn't the middle of his story. This isn't the end. This is the beginning. This is, this entire trilogy was his original origin story because he went from you know people okay so you know how in the first two movies people are like dude this guy's iron boy jr what a loser i mean i never agreed with that but now they don't they can't say that because this is his origin story he is going from the under the swing of iron man to his own character he is the spider-man and let's just be honest he is the best spider-man he is the spider-man he is better than the other two and guess what guess what toby also said that andrew is the amazing spider-man so you can't say that toby's better because toby said he is um andrew is amazing so stop talking about who's the best but i know i just said that Tom's the best, but let's be honest, this is his origin story, and it is the best origin story that we could have ever gone for a character like this. Now, at the very end of the movie, like the end of the movie, I don't have a picture of this, because I forgot to get a picture of this, but basically, Spider-Man gets a new costume, the classic, comic accurate, red and blue suit, 
And so, his classic comic book, Red and Blue Suit, epic. Very, very epic. Let's just be honest, it is the best suit he's ever had, because he made it. And he does the last, the final swing of the movie. He flies over dirty, like, the Rockefeller Center or something. I'm not sure. Um, and that's where the finale of Hawkeye is going to be taking place. So we might see Spider-Man swinging through the sky. And now people are saying yes, but the movie takes place around summertime because the end of the Far From Home is the beginning of this movie. But also, it's actually taken some time between uh some of these scenes, like... His identity is revealed, and he goes to school. But it also seems like some time passes between, you know, everyone going back to their respective areas, universes. Now everyone doesn't know who Spider-Man is. Like, no one at all. And, but in the scene where Spider-Man tries telling MJ and Ned that he's Peter Parker, he's their best friend, and he's Spider-Man, he, he doesn't do, do it. Because he can't. He doesn't want to hurt these people again. Because he sees a little band-aid on MJ. So that's pretty sweet. But depressing at the same time. But that scene is like. It's snowing outside. So it's winter time. It's definitely winter time. So yes. Maybe maybe we will see Spider-Man. Okay. Just, guys just chill out. Okay. No need to hate on, these, on us. Just because we're. Six, like, we're just making a rumor. Whatever. So, this movie, depressing. 10 out of 10. I loved it. It was the best movie ever. Actually, ever. Like, ever in the entire world. I've seen no better movie than this. And I feel like I say that with every new movie I see. But this movie will be in my heart as the best movie ever. If not, just the best movie for Spider-Man. But I don't think anything can top this, even in, and even Avengers Endgame. If this movie wasn't already good enough, though, you should have stuck around for the post credit scene. Because Tom Hardy Venom is in the MCU, baby. And guess what? He starts transporting back to his universe, because Doctor Strange is done with the spell. So now... Um... The Venom is going back to his universe because, you know, he forgets about Spider-Man. He doesn't know who he is anymore. So Doctor Strange puts him back in his universe. Like, he brings everyone back to their respective universes. Now, people are probably going to be questioning, how does this Venom know who Peter is? Like, Spider-Man. Well, there's this theory that Venoms, like, Venoms have a hive mind. So, since the Venom from the Spider-Man 3 original trilogy knows who Spider-Man is, which is Peter, obviously, Toby Maguire Peter, but this Tom Hardy version knows who Spider-Man is because of the other Venom who knows he is who he is. So, that's how I think it's happening because why would Tom Hardy just be brought in here for no reason? Well, except to bring a piece of Venom, symbiote, and then just be brought back. Doesn't make sense, right? But this theory actually does make it make sense. So that's well, I think that's what's happening here. But I could be wrong. Um, but if if that's the case, then why did this little piece of the symbiote stay here? You know. I mean, I'm all for having a different Venom because Tom Hardy movies still pretty. I like a really good Venom movies, but um, I just don't like the first one that much. The tone is a bit all over the place. It's a comedy, and then five minutes later, it's a romance, and then it's a horror and suspense. It's it's all over the place. But I have my opinion. I'm sure you have yours. No need to hate each other for it. All right. So, that's how the movie ends. There's an end credit scene with Doctor Strange trailer for the Multiverse of Madness. So, if you want if you haven't already seen the end credit scene, go check it out. It's at the very end of the credits. 
but yeah, this movie, insane. I know this is a really long video, but insane movie. I loved it, and I know this movie is going to be the best when everyone sees it. They're going to love it. I know this video was all over the place. I know I'm using the gallery app to show you the pictures. But honestly, I don't think that changes anything. That doesn't change the fact that I've talked about this movie. And I've watched this movie. And I love this movie. And I just want to have a conversation with you guys in the comments. Go go type your feelings on this movie. Go type. Because this is a spoiler video. Everyone's going to be typing spoilers in the comments. So go do that. Do it. Let's talk about Aunt My Dime. How depressing that made at the movie. You know? Let's go talk about Andrew and Toby in this movie. Let's go talk about Lego sets that could be made of this movie. Let's talk about anything. Because that's what YouTube is for. Or should be, at least. <laughs> so, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like with your web shooters. And swing your way over to the subscribe button and hit that notification bell for more content like this. And I will see you in the next one. Goodbye. Oops. Let me just say that again. Goodbye.